What's up guys, it's Josh, we're back again with another video. Congrats, you made it to part three in my series where I help you get into your dream school, whether that be Yale, Harvard, or Northern Virginia Community College. Today's topic is test scores. Yay, everyone loves test scores. In this video, we'll be discussing what your SAT and ACT actually mean once they hit the table of the admissions officers. And I'll also give you my tips on when you should take the SAT and how many times you should take it. Let's get into it. All right, when I was touring colleges as a junior and senior and sitting through those boring information sessions, I discovered a common theme in the way that the admissions officers perceive test scores. Let me explain. So if you've ever been to a college information session, you know there's that one annoying kid in the back who thinks he knows everything, yet ironically, he's still asking the most questions. Um, excuse me, ma'am, how many APs do I need to get into this school? Um, I, uh, uh, I've, I've only taken eight years of Swahili, is that enough? What, what if I got an A minus in my art history class? Do I still get in? Or maybe even worse, his mom may be asking the questions for him. For some reason, this kid always seemed to ask about test scores too. And the admissions officers always had the same answer. They would describe test scores as one of the last things they checked. Especially with the new SAT only being two years old, Standardized testing is gradually becoming less and less important in the college application process. Test scores act as a benchmark. At Ivy League schools, as long as you're sitting somewhere around a 1400 to a 1450 or higher, you should be good. That doesn't mean to say that a perfect SAT score couldn't also be the tipping point in an application. But once again, there are hundreds of kids with perfect SATs that do get rejected. In conclusion, you should care about your test scores, but don't obsess over them. They're only a small aspect of your application. Now let's get on to my tips for test scores. I'm going to lay you guys out my schedule of when I took my test. November of my junior year, I bought my ACT prep book so I could study to take the test in December. I get my scores back in January and see that I got a 31. Not bad, but I had a feeling I could do better on the SAT. If you guys are curious about the similarities and differences between the SAT and ACT, I actually made a whole video on that, so go check that out. Then I sign up for the March SAT, which by the way is the first time the new SAT was ever offered. I study all of January and February and end up scoring at 1420. Looking back on my application process, I probably could have stopped there, but you guys know me. I keep going, I sign up for the May SAT. I study hard again and end up getting a 1470. Once again, a great score, but the problem was I had a 790 in math and I needed that perfect score. Despite what my parents were saying, I sign up to take the SAT one more time in October of my senior year. Finally, I score a 1500 with an 800 math and a 700 verbal and I was done. This schedule worked for me, but in my opinion, I took the SAT way too many times. Here's what I would do if I had to do it again. First, study and take the SAT in the fall slash winter of your junior year. Wait a couple months and then study and take the SAT in early spring. Decide which one you like better and stick with that test. Study really hard for it and take it one more time towards the end of your junior year. At that point, you should have a pretty good score. That's what I would recommend most. If you guys are curious about how I prep for the SAT, I dedicated a whole video to that topic, so you can go check that out. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hey, maybe you even learned something. If you would like to support more content from me in the future, drop a like and hit that big red subscribe button. Comment down below any questions or concerns or what you thought of the video. I try to respond to everyone. As always, I'll be back again tomorrow at 3 p.m. with another video. See you soon.